Charles, the Prime Minister, said he regretted the anguish that the restrictions would cause, but that he was left with no alternative. Our political editor, Laura Kunzberg, has more details. Three days until the locks are turned. Time for discussion, but the decision isn't really in doubt. After weeks of resistance, the Prime Minister moved to back a shutdown. Prime Minister! But this afternoon, he had to explain to Parliament why the change of heart. Just as first time around, his reason, stopping the NHS from collapse. Let me spell out the medical and moral disaster we face. The sick would be turned away because there was no room in our hospitals. Doctors and nurses could be forced to choose which patients to treat, who would live and who would die. Yet only a fortnight ago, he had mocked the idea, standing in the same place at the dispatch box, that arguments from a miserable-looking Chancellor and many on the Tory backbenches lost out, the Prime Minister reluctantly accepting the case for tighter limits. These restrictions are time-limited. After four weeks, on Wednesday the 2nd of December, they will expire. But I cannot pretend that the way ahead is easy or without painful choices for us all. Remember, schools will stay open and other parts of the UK are following different rules. This isn't exactly the same as the spring. Leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer. But the charge the government's been too slow is familiar. At every stage, the Prime Minister has been too slow, behind the curve. At every stage, he's pushed away challenge, ignored advice and put what he hoped would happen ahead of what is happening. At every stage, he's over-promised and under-delivered. The lockdown comes with all kinds of heavy costs, though. Nicholas in Bournemouth was made redundant first time round. Just yesterday, he started his own business. Obviously, going into lockdown now, I, the injury I'm in, I can still continue to work um, in the financial advice sector, but um, it's going to make it very hard. But Karen, who hopes to form a bubble with her children, is frustrated. I think it's absolutely, totally nuts and wrong to do any lockdown. Polling suggests most of the public, like pensioner Joe, back the plan however reluctantly. They've got to do it. We've got to have a, a break, um, try and get things under control again. But the financial pain will be acute. Thousands and thousands of jobs have already gone. The government's racking up billions of borrowing, trying to keep the economy afloat, extending the furlough scheme in England and support for the self-employed. But the fear among business about what's next is great. Economic damage is unavoidable. Gas tanks are depleted. Batteries run down in so many businesses across the country, in retail, uh, in hospitality, our aviation sector absolutely on its knees. Back in Parliament, the Prime Minister doesn't have to worry about losing the vote that will make lockdown official, but he hasn't won the argument on his back benches. How many collapsed businesses and how many job losses he and his government believe are a price worth paying? As we drift further into an authoritarian, coercive state, the only legal mechanism, the only legal mechanism left open to me is to vote against that legislation. Can the Prime Minister demonstrate to me that the damage that will be caused to East Sussex by locking down on our economy, on liberty, on lives, on livelihoods would be a lot worse were we to do absolutely nothing? Despite that irritation, when it comes to the vote on Wednesday, MPs are likely to give a grumpy OK, with Boris Johnson's huge majority and Labour support. Unless something very unexpected happens between now and then, England's doors are set to close at midnight on Wednesday. Temporary, the government hopes. Tough on everyone, ministers know. And lockdown comes with more political turmoil second time round. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. Let's take a look at the latest official government figures. They show 136 deaths were reported in the latest 24-hour period. That's people who died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. It means on average in the past week, 265 deaths were announced every day. And it takes the total number of deaths so far across the UK to 46,853. Now, a new five-level system of restrictions has come into effect in Scotland. No part of Scotland has been placed in the highest tier, but the central belt, including Glasgow and Edinburgh, will be in level three of the new system, uh, with pubs and restaurants closing at 6pm and uh, no alcohol sold. Uh, the Highlands and many of the island communities will be in tier one, with more relaxed rules. 
Our Scotland editor, Sarah Smith, has more details. The walk is hot for the first time in weeks. This Glasgow restaurant reopened today, as even under level three restrictions, they can serve food before six, but no alcohol. On balance, I think I'd rather be open than closed. We make most of our revenue in the evenings and a significant proportion of it from drink sales. So to be open till 6 p.m. with no drink sales is still going to be a struggle. They probably won't turn a profit, but want to try to save jobs. Unsure exactly what support Scottish businesses will get from the government in future. As the furlough scheme's now been extended through November across the whole of the UK, the big question here is what happens if Scotland goes into a tighter lockdown at a later date? Will the Chancellor pay for Scottish workers to be furloughed then? Nicola Sturgeon says funds must be available at the time when they're needed. It can't be right that the only time uh, that additional financial support is made available is when the south of England needs to go into a lockdown. That, that just isn't fair. Then, taking many by surprise, the Scottish Tory leader later secured a promise from the Prime Minister that furlough funds will be available if Scotland needs them. If, uh, if uh, other parts of the UK uh, decide to go into, uh, into measures which require the furlough scheme, then of course it's available to them. That, that has to be right. And, and that applies not just now, uh, but of course in the future as well. In Paisley, volunteers are trying to spread a little happiness. It cheers somebody up, do you know what I mean? It brings a smile to somebody's face. It's been over six weeks since people could visit each other's homes in Scotland. Instead, houseplants are being delivered to the elderly, who fear another lockdown. Lockdown, oh, we're dreadful, wouldn't it? Different rules for different countries, but the leaders of all four UK nations say they will work together to try and find a joint approach to Christmas. Sarah Smith, BBC News, Glasgow. The North West Ambulance Service in England has declared a major incident because of the high level of calls it's received, especially in the Greater Manchester area. It's warned that people might need to make their own way to hospital if their condition isn't life-threatening or to dial 111 for medical advice. The service added there was nothing currently to indicate that the surge was due to coronavirus. Now, in Wales, the two-week firebreak lockdown will be lifted next Monday. Two households will be allowed to form a bubble and to mix together, uh, but travel across the border to England will not be allowed without a reasonable excuse because of the English lockdown coming into force. Now, our Wales correspondent, Howell Griffith, is in Cardiff with the latest on what's being expected there. Howell? Yes, Hugh. Well, the Welsh Government says they see no reason to change their plans just because Downing Street have decided on an English lockdown. So, a week today, next Monday, shops here can reopen. Gyms and hairdressers too. Pubs, bars and restaurants can welcome back customers, although we don't have the detail yet on what restrictions may be in place for them. What we do know is that as Wales comes out of its fire break, we won't go back into localised lockdowns. National measures only from now on, we're told. And that includes people in Wales being able to travel anywhere they want within Wales, but they're not allowed to leave the country for foreign holidays or to go over the border into England without a reasonable excuse, such as travelling for work. Likewise, people in England won't be allowed to come into Wales during the English lockdown, so no popping over the border for a quick pint. Which country's got the approach right? Will this firebreak have brought success? We won't know that for a couple of weeks. And no one yet is ruling out another firebreak in the new year. Howell, many thanks again. Howell Griffith there with the latest uh, on the picture in Wales.